So uh, I'm back quicker than I expected for our final speaker in Asia. Um, last but no means least, as they say. Uh, I'm really, really excited uh, for this. Uh, so I'm thrilled to welcome Natalie Hall. And Natalie is a high caliber workplace operations manager with over 15 years experience leading and managing teams to provide exceptional workplace experiences across a range of different sectors. Uh, in her current role at LinkedIn, Natalie is focused on delivering global workplace strategies and programs across the APAC region uh, and also responsible for the workplace site management for LinkedIn Australia, Singapore and Malaysian offices. Uh, today, she'll share her expertise to help us understand and shape the at-home workplace experience. Um, and without further ado, if, if I can work it for one last time this morning. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Matt? How are you? Great, thank you. Very excited to be here. Oh, well, we're very excited to have you. And and, and, and we're in another home. Like, it's just a, such a bizarre <laughs> world. Isn't it? I, know, I know we've had 12 months of this, but it, I, it will never get old or it never get new. <laughs> I know, I know. It's great to see how people, how people live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be public enemy number one. My wife is upstairs or has been trying to sleep all night. I absolutely oh, no. guarantee that my loud foghorn voice will not have allowed her to do so. So, yeah, um, so well, <laughs> I, I'm going to exit stage right and let you do your thing. And then I'll come back afterwards and uh, ha have a chat. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All right, well, as I said, it's really great to be part of this amazing event, uh, and I feel it's a great way to kick the year off. So continuing with the work from home thing, theme, and big thanks to Ying for her session, I'm going to chat with you today about the work from home experience and how we can be more sustainable whilst we're working from home. As Matt mentioned, I've been in the workplace industry for the last 15 years, and I've been very lucky to experience a, ver a variety of different workplaces, from the very corporate closed offices uh, to cubicles and to the open, flexible, uh, open plan working. But I can't say I've ever worked from home for more than say one or two days at a time prior to the pandemic. And when I did work from home, it was probably once every couple of months, once a quarter, if I was lucky. So when the pandemic hit and the government issued their stay at home notices and all our offices closed, I probably had the same thought as most of you. It's not gonna last long. It's gonna be over in a month or two, but no, it's been almost a year and most of us are still working at home. The pandemic, it's pretty much completely upended our way of working, but I feel it's also shown us that we can adapt, we can change and that having a more flexible working environment, it can and it does work. We've proved it over the last year. And I do know, I know it's not gonna work for all companies and businesses, but I do feel that there are more organizations that are now more open to flexible or hybrid working and working from home. The conversations I had prior to the pandemic, a lot of the managers and companies that um, we've been speaking to, they weren't really convinced. Um, that a more flexible working style was needed. And they felt that to have a successful team that everybody had to physically be in the office. That mindset seems to have changed now. And I do uh, find that more business leaders uh, are, seem to be a lot more open to enabling a more flexible or hybrid type working environment. Technology has played a huge part in that. Uh, we're obviously able to connect a lot easier with each other. And that's definitely helped employees become more successful without physically being in the office. Um, as it was mentioned before, the cost of real estate is also a factor. And if we can be smarter and more efficient with how our spaces are utilized and by allowing more flexibility in where we choose to work, that's also going to reduce the spend in that area. Do I think working from home is going to remain a way of the future? Yeah, I do. I think to an extent or in at least at least a hybrid way, it's definitely going to. That's not to say that I don't think we need to go into the office anymore or that everyone is going to want to work from home all the time. 
we still need that connection with other people. And being in the office, you have those unplanned connections where you just meet somebody, say, in the break room or where you're getting a coffee or a water and you make that connection and it helps you to build a different kind of relationship with people. And some people, they just prefer to work from an office. It might be more conducive for their environment. Maybe they can focus better. It could be their internet connection or maybe they have very noisy neighbours or a construction site next door. I do have a construction going on next door, so I do apologise if there is some drilling that does interrupt, but I'm hoping they're all at lunch uh, at the moment. I also think that going forward, employees are really going to want that choice and being able to be more flexible and being able to choose where they do work from. Personally, I love working from home. I feel like I'm more focused. I tend to get a lot more done. But admittedly, when it started, I, I hated it. I didn't like it at all. Um, and because I thought it was only going to be a short while before we were back in the office, I guess I didn't, and I like a lot of other people that I know, didn't put any effort into our workspace or how I was actually managing my time while I was obviously working from home. The first few months I spent sitting on the couch or at the kitchen table hunched over my laptop and it felt like I was working pretty much non-stop from when I woke up to pretty much going to bed. I was always on my laptop. If I wasn't replying to emails on my laptop, I was on my phone and replying to emails, accepting meetings at all hours. And then when it comes to the weekend, you're also, again, on the laptop because you're catching up with family and friends. You've got Zoom bingo or the Zoom quizzes, catch up with other friends. And it was pretty much I'm chained to the laptop. It, I, I really didn't like it. Obviously, when you're in the office, you have regular breaks. Uh, you're going to talk to people. You're having a coffee with somebody. You might be even just moving to a meeting room uh, or you're going out for a coffee or lunch. In Singapore, it's not unusual to go out and enjoy your full hour for your lunch break. So you're getting outside of the office and you're away from your screen. Also, on your commute, I know maybe you spent half an hour to an hour or more traveling into the office and home again. So that time, you're away from the screen. Uh, I used to love to listen to music on my way in or I would walk half the way in and, you know, it just helps you think about other things or, or refocus for the day. When the government extended the lockdowns uh, and more and more companies started realizing um, and what we did as well okay work from home is going to be the new the new normal for the foreseeable future and we had to start considering that our homes as a new workspace and think about how can we help our employees have a better experience whilst they're working from home at LinkedIn, we set up several working groups and one of those working groups was dedicated to help supporting employees working from home. So resources were gathered on ergonomics because that's a very key part of working from home. And we also created a really fun video on how uh, employees could set up their workstation using what they have at home and setting up their workstation in the best sort of ergonomical way. So with your backs and having the right posture. In addition to the ergonomics, we also added a health and wellness section. And this is where employees can access all types of resources and materials to support the mental health, uh, mental well-being and the health. The fitness partners that we would usually use uh, in our gyms, they had to adapt the way that they were doing things. And they created loads of really great online fitness classes for us as well as coming up with challenges for employees to keep them motivated and keep them moving. I mean, I love a bit of friendly competition and it seemed to work for a lot of people to get them out and moving. We also added a food section. Um, usually when we're in the office, we do have our cafes. So we were trying to, okay, how do we get people to be more nutritious and healthy when they're at home? So our chefs created video content on preparing and providing simple but nutritious food that they could cook at home and also hosted live events that the whole families could participate in and help sort of with that cooking um, participation. That then extended into recommendations for local fresh food suppliers and local farmers for employees to purchase their fresh ingredients. And that in turn helped to support the local economy and local businesses. All the information that, we, that, that was gathered and put together, that was then uploaded onto a SharePoint site, which was shared with all our employees and that they can access uh, at all times. And it's continuously updated with new content and material. 
I'm very grateful to work for a company like LinkedIn as throughout the whole pandemic, everyone from the top management all the way down really promotes wellness for the employees and making it very clear that our wellness is a top priority, especially because of this environment. It's, I think it's because it's so uncertain. People need that support uh, for, for the wellness and making sure the mental health is taken care of. So top managers always making sure that we're getting the right work life balance and that we do take care of ourselves. If we need a break, we're encouraged to take one. And if we need time out for our, either ourselves or our family, again, we're encouraged to do that. One of the other things that I love about work from home, as Matt sort of alluded to, was seen in people's houses. So I've got to meet so many of my team members are children, and I would never have the com that sort of I'd never have the ability to do that if we were working from the office. So it's just a great way to build a different and more personal uh, relationship with team members. So once it was sort of we knew that work from home was going to continue, uh, I realized then, that, okay, I need to set up my current um, workspace and start thinking about a dedicated area that was going to be more sustainable for me than sitting on the couch and being hunched over. So I focused on three areas, um, and they were my workspace, my daily routine, and sustainability. Very passionate about sustainability and protecting uh, the environment and the planet. So that was really important to me and I wanted to be ensure that I continue to be as sustainable as possible whilst I was working from home. With the workspace, see, uh, I'm sure everyone's been working from home for nearly a, home, for a year now. So it's quite important to find, like if you can, a quiet, naturally lit space. For me, it was easy. I'm lucky enough to have a spare bedroom with a window right opposite me. See, not everyone has that, especially in a lot of countries in APAC. Uh, a lot of families live together and there's not a lot of room. Because we spend the majority of our day usually at the same spot on our chair or in our work workspace working, we need to make sure that we're super comfortable where we decide to set up. Some people might have more than one area uh, and that might allow them to sit at one, stop, at one spot and maybe stand and work from another spot. Wherever we, you set up or we set up, um, need to make sure that we're reducing any strains or stress on our body so we don't end up with the injuries like the back or the wrist pain. If we, we encourage that if you can't do that, then you should be getting up and moving regularly. We do have, uh, or we, we did have an on-site ergonomics team. They also have adapted their way of working. So they have gone from on-site assessments to virtual assessments and they are able to provide guidance and advice for all our employees about how to make the best of what they have in their homes. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're always recommending you have to buy this furniture or that furniture or the highest quality or expensive furniture. They will help us to work with what we have at home. That might be putting a cushion behind the back on the chair. It could be using an old shoe box or chairs to make sure that you're in the correct posture. Uh, and that they'll make sure that, that that workstation fits for you and that's the, the benefit, I guess, of having the virtual assessment. Uh, I feel that a chair is probably one of the most important pieces of furniture. Uh, if you are going to invest money in setting up your workspace, I do recommend that if you're going to invest, invest in a quality adjustable chair. Again, not everyone can afford that, but there are some reasonably priced chairs out there if you do look, um, or you can engage your current office furniture uh, supplier and maybe negotiate prices with them uh, that your employees can reach out to them directly to purchase if they need to. We've done that uh, with a lot of our furniture suppliers and all of them are super supportive about doing that. Also, these secondhand options, they're great because it also helps the environment. The second part I focused on was routine and this is probably the toughest part for a lot of people um, as I said, I'm sure most of us, and I know I certainly did, it felt like that working from home, I couldn't switch off. So I decided to set myself some boundaries and some non-negotiables, and I'll admit I'm still working hard to stick to these uh, boundaries. But one of the non-negotiables that I do have, and that is no late calls on a Friday night. Uh, any other day I can manage, but obviously a Friday, it's the end of the week. I like to wind down and relax, maybe have a wine or two. And having a late call at night, you, you just can't switch off until that call is finished. Being an APAC, we 
do tend to either have late night calls or very early morning calls. So I do try to schedule my time. So if I have a late night call, I start later um, in the morning. Or if I have a super early call, I make sure it's not back to back with a late call. Um, and it's just a matter of communicating that to the organizers of the meetings and making sure a lot of the time they forget there's a time zone and they don't realize we're not in the same time zone and that it's like midnight or 1 a.m. that they're asking us to jump on a call and then another one at seven. Do you find them usually pretty flexible in making the changes? Or I try to arrange to have one or two calls, uh, might be go quite late, but if they're one or two days of the week, then it's a little bit easier to manage than having, say, four late calls um, every night of the week. One of the other tips that I learned um, what, that was shared from one of the sort of group meetings that we had at LinkedIn was planning my day. So I spend about 10 minutes in the morning just to go over my to-do to list, uh, which I created the night before and prioritizing what I need to focus on for the day. If I need to, I will book some time in the calendar for that task. So it's in the calendar and, and nobody else is going to schedule a meeting, hopefully uh, during that time. With meetings, um, what we try to do at LinkedIn is we try to schedule uh, a 45 minute or a 50 minute meeting instead of a full hour. What that does, it gives all attendees just that little bit of a time for either a quick break. Sometimes you just need five to 10 minutes just to stop, breathe and refocus. Maybe adjust your uh, to-do list, reply to an email or just get a coffee. And I know that a lot of the times you have back-to-back -back meetings and it used to be that you could go from sort of 8 a.m. right through to 4 p.m. and literally you're lucky to get a break and it's only if a meeting finished early that you would have time to sort of get off your chair. I also find that if I spend five to 10 minutes at the end of each day, I do tidy my workbench and I plan for my for the, for the following day. Once I've got a plan and I've got a key, sort of I write it down on my uh, schedule or my to-do list uh, that I have an online version. Once I've done that, I know in my head, okay, my day's planned for tomorrow. I don't now have to worry about what I've got to do tomorrow and these million things. Once I've uh, typed it in or written it down, I just, I don't know, it, it just helps me sort of to, to switch off uh, for the day. Uh, lastly is I always try to get out of the house. Um, when I finish work, if I've been stuck in sort of my office or my spare room all day, I need to get fresh air. Um, it's just good for my mental um, wellness. And I pretend it's like my commute time. So I used to spend at least half an hour to an hour commuting every day. So I now turn that into something else. And this is something that I do recommend is if you used to spend that time commuting, why don't you finish at your usual time and use that commute time for something away from your laptop? Spend it with the family, spend it playing with your kids or learning or going out for an exercise. Just having that time away from your laptop or your screen is just a, a, huge, a huge benefit and it just helps sort of to reset, to reset basically. Uh, so, the, so finally is sustainability. How can we be more sustainable while we're working at home? There's loads of ways we can be sustainable. One, not traveling to the office by car or by taxi is already one way and we're already being more sustainable while we're not doing that. Uh, being in Singapore and a lot of Asia is probably quite hot. Um, some of the other countries in APAC, maybe not so, but if you are, uh, using your air conditioning or your heating, just adjusting your thermostat one or two degrees higher or lower is going to help to reduce those carbon emissions. And it's also going to help to reduce the cost of your monthly bill. That's obviously going to go up because we're all working at home all day, every day now. You can reduce your energy consumption. You can lower the brightness of your screen. And that in turn is also going to help to reduce the eye strain. Check that your laptop and your screen is set to a sleep or an active mode when you are away from uh, away from your, your station, if you're on lunch or on a break. And unplugging your equipment when it's not in use. Even when it's plugged in, you're going to be drawing energy from the grid. So if you can switch to energy efficient light bulbs like LEDs, and I do know that, yeah, they do cost a little bit more to purchase, but they do last longer and use less energy. So overall, it's a, it's a win-win. If you're able to, uh, and with those savings from increasing your or decreasing your thermostat and using energy efficient light bulbs, you might be able to look at switching to green energy. So 
Obviously, installing solar panels is not an option for everybody, but you can also source renewable energy for your homes from most energy suppliers. That's called a green option. And once you've opted into the, the electricity to your home is bundled with renewable energy credits. So that would mean depending on which package you purchase, either some or all of your electricity is switched to a renewable source. That is really great for those of you who are living in apartments and if you're unable to obviously install the solar panels. You can move to paperless. Um, I have my iPad, which I use for taking all my notes uh, and I have an app. So when I write, it feels just like I'm writing on paper. Um, there's many uh, apps that you can use. There's like notes, um, your sticky note functions. Uh, I feel that's great because you're not using any paper. Although if you do still prefer to use a pen and paper, you can switch to eco-friendly brands or recycled paper. If you purchase your fruit and veggies uh, or meat from local farms and suppliers, if you can, not only does that support your local community and your local farmers, it also helps to reduce the amount of carbon which is used to import from the other side of the world. In Singapore, we don't really have a lot of local um, produce that's grown here. We have a little bit, but if I'm getting my fruit and veggies, I do to tend to purchase from items which are growing within the region, uh, usually Malaysia, um, more so than purchasing if it's from a country far away like the US or anywhere on the other side of the world because the carbon of that coming across is, is quite high. Uh, the second part is sustainable furniture. If you can, if you're looking for furniture to set up, secondhand is a great sustainable way to go, uh, locally made um, or even bamboo products. Bamboo is just as sturdy as plastic and personally I think it looks much nicer than plastic and obviously it's a lot better for the environment. Uh, lastly is recycling. Uh, hopefully everybody's offices have a recycling plan and recycling bins in place. Uh, but I do tend when I go to people's houses or when I speak to, to friends, they don't really have a recycling plan in their homes. Uh, it's just waste that goes into the one bin and it goes into the general waste for landfill. So if you check with your local council uh, and familiarise yourself with the recycling protocols and what items actually can be recycled and perhaps have a, just a separate bin or a separate bag for the recyclables. So that is pretty much the end of my uh, talk and just uh, some a few tips and ideas or suggestions, I guess, on how we can be more sustainable and how you can maybe work from home and improve your work from home experience. Thank you so much. Um, no. lot, lots to digest and I think really good reminders and, and productivity tri uh, tips there. So thank you so much. Um, a, a couple of questions, if, if I may. Sure. Uh, and I'm not putting you on the spot, so uh, <laughs> was that budget made available for transition to home offices and to help help staff at all, whether it be secondhand furniture or stand up desks or anything like that? Yeah, we do. We do. We have been given, um, I guess you could call it, a, there's a policy in place. If we do need to purchase something to help improve it, yeah. uh, we can get, get uh, refunded that or we can reimburse that up to a capped amount. So Fantastic. Now that, yeah, which, which is great. And that's really supportive and, and really helps everybody because obviously, as we all knew at the start, it's probably not going to last long. And now we've got <laughs> yeah. we can invest in uh, doing it properly now. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fantastic that they've done that. Um, I, was, I, was just, I was just interested because, you know, we, we, we all different, have different uh, yeah. circumstances. I think some of the great things that you, you pulled out was just the... I suppose just the, the simple changes that have such a dramatic impact. So yes. um, I, I am not the healthiest I've ever been. Um, <laughs> I, I like I like my food a little bit too much. Uh, and after I, 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 I had a COVID uh, marriage, we had a, 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 a reduced wedding from 150 to just our parents. So we were very lucky to have got married. And in the, very uh, lucky. Yeah. After I lost the weight, so I've just heaped it back on again. But to, to my point. We used to do, I used to about, I, I worked from home anyway, home office, but I used to do about yeah. 10 to 20,000 steps just yeah. going to meetings or going to London or, and I suddenly found myself doing about 900 steps. Exactly, um, exactly. And, and we'd go for a walk and with intent on a Sunday or something and we'd, we'd get back and go, I've just done a five mile walk. And then we'd look at the steps and that was 10,000 steps. We're going, 
but we've literally just done what we'd usually do normally without even trying to do a big walk. <laughs> and and it's those differences that you don't realise having such a massive, it could have a detrimental impact on your health. It, it, it does. I find for my mindset, if I don't get out, if I'm stuck home, I just get really antsy and a bit yep. grumpy. And even if I don't feel like going out, which is most of the time, yep. and I, I yep. my, as soon as, once I'm out for five, ten minutes, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I got out. Yep. Especially if I, have, if I have music on and I'm listening to some good some good tunes, yep. it just changes totally how I'm feeling. And, you know, you're tired and you're like, oh, I'm tired. Go for a walk. I say, oh, actually, I feel all right yeah, now. You can, you can curl up on the sofa or if you get yourself out. So that's my, my other point that I, 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 I loved was uh, – one of our other speakers later in the day, and you can tell I'm a, I'm on the cusp. I need to go to bed. Um, Robert Glazer, who's he's a author of Elevate, he's actually closing the hole in Spirothon. He's done remote work for about twenty years, and he talks about creating boundaries. Um, so he has a family, uh, wife, children, dogs, and he said he at the end of the day will leave the house and come back in again because he needed that disconnect from his working day and then coming back in and being dad or, or husband. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to say, you'll use your commuting time you used to have and at that moment of the day, go out, do walk, put the earphones yeah. in. I think that's such a great tip. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah. Home all day, and there's no yeah. Ex exactly. And that's what a lot of even our employees sort of said, it's just like they feel like they're on all the time and there is yeah. no disconnect. So that's sort of what we also help to promote. Just take some time out. And we really encourage people to go out for a walk and we have the, you know, steps competitions to try and <laughs> get people taking some time out. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So is, is there anything else to add that you'd like to add? No, I think I think I I think I've covered everything. I'm sure there's there's loads more, and I'm sure lots of people have got different ideas and tips yeah. and tricks to to do it. So, well, uh, we're like I say, we're, your your session will go on the site on demand session. I just have to personally say thank you for your insights, your expertise, and your energy uh, you brought to the to finish off Asia. Um, thank you so much again. I. I um, I realized during this period, I draw a lot of energy from interactions with people face to face. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this is a lovely uh, substitute. So thank you for giving us such great positive energy out into the world. And um, I hope to meet you in person one day soon. Absolutely. So do I. And thank you for letting me be part of this event. It's been fantastic. So well done. That's great. <laughs> Take care and stay safe. Thank you. you too.